What does maritime shipping, laying of submarine cables and pipelines, constructing artificial islands and other installations as well as scientific research have in common? They are all freedoms of the high seas and are open to all states, whether coastal or landlocked. It is a general provision that the freedom of the high seas can be exercised by all states. What is permitted and what is not is subject to the legal order of the seas and oceans. The very basis of this legal order is the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, the so-called Constitution of the Oceans. Rights and duties regarding all uses and activities of the sea depend particularly on the type of use and where it takes place. The seas and oceans are divided into different legal marine zones, from the territorial sea to the high seas, as well as from the continental shelf to the area. Modern law of the sea balances rights and interests of all states. The main objective is to maintain the safety and efficiency of maritime traffic. The freedom of navigation on the high seas and in the exclusive economic zone is accompanied by the right of innocent passage in the territorial sea and by the right of transit passage in straits, which are used for international navigation. This guarantees the free movement of goods, which is essential for international trade as we know it today. But there is more than maritime shipping and other marine uses and activities mentioned. Fishing. According to UNCLOS, all states have the right for their nationals, fishermen and fishing industry to engage in fishing on the high seas. This right, however, is subject to the duty of states to adopt measures for the conservation of the living resources of the high seas. The different uses and activities should not collide with each other and should be exercised undisturbed to one another. For this reason, the international community has developed minimum rules and standards, as well as special competences, like, for example, in maritime shipping. It is quite impressive that maritime transport, which spans the great length of human civilization, remained for most of history outside any international regulation. In 1948, the international community saw it fit to turn the tide and establish an intergovernmental organization for agreeing rules for shipping. The International Maritime Organization owes its success today to the so-called technical nature of its work. By being focused on safety, marine environmental protection and security, IMO standards have achieved worldwide acceptance. Many standards are mandatory and cannot be undermined by specific countries or companies. For other uses of the sea, such as the laying of submarine cables, pipelines and artificial islands, there is no single regulating body such as the IMO. It may be surmised that the success of IMO could, with increasing usage of the sea, be emulated in other areas. All states, coastal and landlocked, enjoy the freedom of the high seas, but only as long as they are exercised with due regard for the interests of other states. Already now, a complex act of balance, which is becoming even more challenging in the context of new uses and activities of the sea, such as marine biotechnology or the exploitation of mineral resources from the deep seabed.